Hello chaps, welcome back to another three months later video where I tell you all about my experiences and opinions of printers in the last few months. This time we're talking about the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. All right, let's, let's start with some background. So the printer is behind me and it's been there for actually six months rather than three months. Um, has just over 400 hours on it, which is clearly not that long for six months time. There are two reasons for this. So one, the printer was down for a long time, which was my fault entirely. Um, I was printing nylon and then I swapped to PLA sometime later and forgot that I was printing nylon and didn't use the appropriate purge. And the hot end got clogged and I couldn't get it free. So I had to ask Elgu for a new hot end, which they sent to me. Thank you, Elgu. Um, but that was entirely my fault. That was That was my bad. The second reason is much more important and we'll get to that. Firstly, let's start off with the video that we made six months ago about the Centauri Carbon. And in it, you might remember that I had some grief with the lighting in the chamber and the noise. Beginning with the lighting, uh, it was awful. It's very hard to sugarcoat this. It is the worst printer lighting I have ever seen in my life. And it's actually so bad that it's hard to notice when you turn the light on when the door is closed, because that's kind of tinted as well. And the noise, well, it wasn't it wasn't super loud. It's definitely not the loudest printer that I've used, uh, but it was loud enough. It was definitely louder than most printers. Now, obviously this is the same printer. It's still dark, it's still loud. Uh, and how do I feel after six months of using it? Well, with the lighting, um, I actually don't care that much. It's, it's fine, it's definitely bad, but it's not a problem for me. It's definitely not spectacular. And if you're doing a time-lapse, it's not good, but I don't need to do time lapses. The only problem is if I'm doing a little bit of maintenance, it's a bit dark for that. Luckily, I haven't had to do much maintenance besides installing the new hot end, so that's okay. The noise, well, take a guess. That doesn't bother me at all because I'm constantly listening to music. I'm listening to music right now. I'm not, that would be, that would be really hard to concentrate. So I don't, I don't care that much, but my uh, other marketing colleagues over there might. Does that mean you'll have the same feelings as I? Absolutely not. So if you bought this printer, you might have had to consider where you're going to put it. Far, far away from your bedroom, especially if you're doing overnight prints, and you might have had to consider room lighting too. However, this is a big however, because the printer that I have is not the printer that you're going to get if you buy it now because there is an upgraded version with better lighting and a quieter fan. So those of you who were wary about this when it came out, you might have made the right choice. Okay, let's talk about the wear on the PTFE. This printer has a very sharp angle on the PTFE when it was reaching the printhead. Uh, I haven't actually noticed any problems besides putting the filament in. Sometimes that can be quite irritating and just fiddling trying to push it in. It's not nice. I haven't noticed any additional problems. There's no wear that I can see. Uh, there's no kinks or bends on the PTFE that would inhibit the movement of filament through it. I think one main problem was when the printhead moves to the back left. There appears to be risk for both kinks on the PTFE and motion issues. That is an issue when you are printing something that extends close to the edge there. I haven't noticed anything. I have printed a few large things on the Centauri Carbon, but maybe just not enough to show the wear. Uh, let me know if you guys have had problems here. If you've bought this printer and you've noticed that, uh, yeah, let us let us know. I think I'd like to know and other people would too. Uh, print quality. Print quality, there have been no problems with regard to that, actually. I just printed this yesterday and the quality is close to flawless. Like, it's good. And if it wasn't for the macro shot, you might actually think that this was a resin print. Okay. No AMS. Uh, like I said in the video, uh, I had hoped that would be an AMS type device in Q3. Q3 has come and gone. Uh, we don't have one, which is a shame. And given the rumors regarding the Centauri Carbon 2, we might have to wait longer. But the most important thing that I have learned from using this printer is it doesn't suit me or my workflow. And this is the second reason uh, why I haven't used this printer as much as the others. In, in the office, uh, because I've become very, very used to an AMS or an AMS type device. And having the filament already loaded on that, ready to print and other filaments as well, uh, has become very, very comfortable for me. 
there is nothing wrong with this printer, but there isn't really anything that makes it more desirable than the printers that I already have in the office. If I want to print ABS or ASA, then I'd use a printer that has a heated build chamber. If I want to print something in multicolor, I would use one of the bamboo printers with the AMS or the Creality printer with the CFS. There is no reason for me to have this printer when I have, I'm sorry, more capable printers. It's just another printer. But Elegoo never really wanted to make a printer that was special, apart from the price, which uh, you can't ignore that. It is very affordable for a printer that just works and works really well. It's not a bad printer. It's actually a great printer for a beginner. If you already have a printer, this probably isn't for you, unless you have like an Ender 3, you might want to upgrade. But yeah, if you have a printer, you probably have a printer that's just as capable as the Centauri Carbon. And this really brings back memories to like 2020, when we were deep into the race to the bottom and new printers were just cheaper, but maybe with an accessory feature, something like that, but basically the same. Still, there are a few things that undeniably set this printer apart from other cheaper beginner printers. So firstly, uh, three hardware things, the, the hardened steel extruder gears, the hardened steel nozzle and the 320 degree hot end. Like what, what beginner printer has a 320 degree hot end? That's, that's nuts. And the hardened gear, like the P1S didn't even have hardened gear. You couldn't print CF filament on that and expect it to be okay after a certain amount of time. And in the first video, we printed PPS CF on a beginner printer that costs what, 300 euro now? The second thing is obviously the price, 300 euro for a printer that can print high strength materials. Uh, that is not something to be overlooked. And if you're a beginner, this is a great printer for you because you can start off with PLA and you can work up to PETG and ABS and ASA and nylon and PPSCF and you don't have to upgrade anything. Most of what we print in the office is PLA. We generally don't print nylon or polycarbonate or PPS. And if we need high strength, then we go for ABS. And if I print ABS, I use something with a heated build chamber. Uh, it's just more reliable than those. And if I print PLA, then half the time I'm printing black or white, and they're always loaded into an AMS. So I don't use the Elegu Centauri Carbon. It's just not right for my workflow. It's nothing special for me. It's another printer, but might be useful for you. Maybe. Let us know what you think, guys. If you've bought this printer and you've used it for quite some time, would you recommend it? Would you stay clear of it? Would you serve it a fine Italian wine and serenade it all evening long? I'd like to know. I'm pretty sure a lot of other people would like to know too. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and we'll be back with another video next week. So until then, later. <laughs>